The town of Quahog, Rhode Island is home to one of the most popular and unruly casts of animated characters ever put on the small screen. While we as an audience love them and their hijinks, it would not be too harsh to say that the characters of Family Guy are some of the meanest and most self-centered people in all of cartoons, even by the standards of adult animation. So what would happen if we took this off-color roster of men, women, and giant chicken into the throes of a Squid Game competition? Who will fall? Who will prevail? Whatever the outcome, we know for sure that it's going to be a freaking sweet one. I'm Kifinosi with Wicked Bin and this is which Family Guy character would win Squid Game. You're probably well aware of the rules by now, but if you aren't, let's make this quick. In this edition of Squid Game, all characters will enter the competition with no special weapons, abilities, nor anything that could give them an unfair advantage over their opponents. We'll also only be looking at characters who originated from the Family Guy series. Characters from shows like The Cleveland Show and American Dad will not be included. But onto who will be included. Today's Squid Game will feature 25 players, including Peter, Lois, Chris, Meg, Stewie, Brian, Joe, Cleveland, Quagmire, Ernie, Consuela, Mayor West, Seamus, Dr. Hartman, Mort, Herbert, Tom Tucker, Diane Simmons, The Evil Monkey, Carl, Bonnie, Bertram, Jillian Carter, and Kevin Swanson. With the rules set and the players introduced, let's start things off with the first game of the day. Red Light, Green Light. Red Light, Green Light is one of the most iconic games we featured in the Netflix series, and it's also one of the easiest to explain. Each player must make their way through a course before time runs out. Along the way, they'll have to listen closely for orders to stop. Failing to do either one of these will result in instant death. Thankfully, all the player needs to survive this game are keen ears and a fast pair of feet. Both Stewie and Bertram would pass this game with little trouble. They're among the smartest characters in the entire show and a couple of the fastest too. Neither one would see this game as a particularly hard challenge to overcome. Brian is another character that would survive without much of a problem. Though he's honestly more human than K9, he still knows how to listen for commands. Uh, sorry, I, I don't do dog shows. It's not my thing. And the ability to run on all fours would likely allow him to be the first to win the game. We also believe that the evil monkey would succeed here for similar reasons. Between his great athleticism and patient mind, he'd be out of this game in no time. Sadly, not every character will make it out of this first game, and the first one on the chopping block is, of course, Meg. Why, you may ask? Well, well, this is Family Guy we're talking about. It would honestly be weirder if she wasn't the first character to get eliminated. Mort is the second loss of the game, and one we saw coming. Mort is very cowardly, and his tendency to panic will cost him his life. We also have to say goodbye to Quahog's mayor, Adam West, this round. West is a pretty naive character when you look at him. He'd likely not take the rules of the game as seriously as he should, which would lead to his elimination. Our fourth and final death of this game is Jillian. A character ironically well-remembered for being rather clueless, we doubt that Jillian would remember the rules of the game as soon as it starts, which is ultimately what will seal her fate. Hey, Oogie! The first game is down, but we've still got several more to go. Up next is a game that's both bitter and sweet, the Honeycomb Challenge. In this game, patience and steadiness are more important than anything. At the beginning of the game, each player is given a cookie, and they need to carve out a predetermined shape without breaking the treat. Steadiness will be handy in making sure the pieces come out intact, and patience is necessary for helping players prevent any sudden mistakes. While he's far from the brightest kid, Chris Griffin is a character we think would surprise players here. He's shown multiple times throughout the show that he's a pretty good artist, so he'd be up to the challenge the game presents. Though he's not an artist, Craig Quagmire also possesses a set of skills that would prove invaluable in this game. If he's capable of piloting planes, it seems safe to say that he has what it takes to win here. Another surprise winner for this round is Seamus. Yes, he, he doesn't have hands, but he can indeed draw. And if he's patient enough to learn how to draw without hands, he'd have no problem bringing that same level of patience to this game. Last up is the most understandable pick of this challenge, Dr. Hartman. A doctor who's always fiddling around with tools and equipment, Hartman would feel right at home operating on this delicacy. In regards to the losers of this game, there isn't a clear one than Peter Griffin himself. Peter is extremely impatient in just about every aspect of his life. Unfortunately for him, this is what will lead to his defeat. For similar reasons, Tom Tucker also bows out at this stage of the game. He also suffers from a lack of patience, and nothing in the show so far indicates that his hands are all that steady. In a game where both of these attributes are key, he has neither of them. His name is Cleveland Brown, and he's the last elimination of the Honeycomb Challenge. Another character who is easily frustrated, Cleveland's slower pace would only carry him so far in this one. That's nice, man. Mentality. We take a break now from the games for another pivotal part of the competition. That's right, it's time to discuss the Midnight Brawl. Taking place between the second and third games, the scenario here is as simple as it sounds. A brawl takes place when the players are supposed to be sleeping, and it leads to great bloodshed. To survive a brutal moment like this, players can focus on taking out their competitors, creating alliances with stronger contestants, or they can hide out and wait for the carnage to subside. Realistically, most Family Guy characters would have little trouble tackling other players. They're always getting into fights and scuffles with each other, so it would hardly be out of character for anyone here 
here. There are a few that would succeed exceptionally well, however. Lois and the giant chicken, whose name is Ernie, by the way, have gotten into numerous fights throughout the show and would be able to defend themselves excellently here. Lois, in particular, received martial arts training in one episode, which would greatly help her out here. Both Joe Swanson and his son Kevin are police and military personnel, respectively, so they would have a level of skill few others would have. While Family Guy has a lot of brawlers, the show also features plenty of schemers. Characters like Stewie and Bertram, and even Channel 5 News anchor Diane Simmons, are great at manipulating others for personal gain. These three would probably team up with the more physical players and pick off others that could pose a threat to them. Although Family Guy might have plenty of good fighters, there are a few that will come up short. One that immediately comes to mind is Seamus. He's quite literally a man with wooden arms and legs. He's a walking target for just about every other player, and we imagine he wouldn't last long during the ordeal. Even though he's called the Evil Monkey, we feel this character is far too nice and polite to try and take out any of the other players. This is a great chance for us to start over. He would probably be taken out by a gang of other players, ending his time in the Squid Games. The Midnight Brawl will also see the end of the cashier, Carl. A character who is lazier than most, he is one of the few left standing who has little combat experience, making his elimination a no-brainer. The last to fall during the brawl is Bonnie. Like Carl, Bonnie is not a character who is prone to fighting like a lot of the other characters are. This makes her noticeably weaker than most others and an easy target for them. Eleven are gone so far, but we still have 14 players left standing. The next game they will have to survive is a classic bout of Tug of War. Tug of War doesn't really need an explanation, but we do want to make it clear that we'll be looking at this game a bit differently from how it's presented in the show. Rather than splitting the characters into distinct groups, we'll be judging each character's chances at survival based on two elements, strength and a willingness to work with others. Poor strength and a self-centered attitude will only lead to disaster here, so it's incredibly important to have both of these areas covered, or at least one of them, extremely well. Family Guy characters tend to act on their own interests, but there in fact are a few characters who will gladly help others. Both Kevin and his father Joe are no strangers to saving lives, and they're easily among the strongest characters left standing. Even Joe, who is wheelchair-bound, would get out of this game alive. Although he's more of an antagonist than anything else, Ernie the Giant Chicken has been shown to have a softer side. Couple that with his good physique, and this chicken is a recipe for victory. When it comes to the characters who will surely be eliminated here, few seem as obvious as Carter Pewterschmidt. He's easily the most selfish character in the entire show, and his self-interest will cost him greatly in the end. We go to a local orphanage, pick out a kid, fill out all the paperwork, and then don't take him home. Consuela doesn't have the strongest build out of the show's many characters, and she's also not one for teamwork. To say she's not making out of this one alive would be quite an understatement. Though Herbert has somehow managed to survive a rather lengthy amount of time in this contest, it'll be this challenge that'll prove to be his breaking point. Without a doubt, the weakest character in the show, Herbert would offer little help to anyone in this game. We're down to the final 11 as we get to a particularly important moment in the series, the marble game. Unlike every other game played in the show, the marble game doesn't have a strict set of rules to follow. Players are put into groups of two and are to obtain their opponent's marbles before the game ends. This level of freedom is something that especially the cunning and ruthless players will use to their advantage. More than anything else, players will need to show their smarts if they are to get the upper hand. In a game like this, few will prove to be as dangerous as Stewie and Bertram. These big brain babies have the art of manipulation down to a T and will use it to help make this game theirs. Likewise, Diane Simmons has proven to be a master schemer in prior episodes. If she could orchestrate several murders and cover them up, she could easily outsmart her opponents in a marble game. Of the characters left standing, few seem as ill-equipped for a game like this as Chris does. He's an easy character to manipulate, and he's not too bright either. Add these traits together, and you've got a surefire recipe for disaster. Though she isn't the dumbest character in the show, Lois is far too trusting, especially of the previously mentioned characters. Any of them could get the jump on her, and she wouldn't notice until it was too late. Quagmire has made it pretty far today, but he's yet another character who's been outsmarted and bamboozled. He's very easy to read, and this is a weakness that his opponents will be quick to exploit. The final character to fall during this game will be Kevin Swanson. Though he's great physically, he's not the smartest, especially compared to who he's up against. Now we finally made it to the penultimate game, Glass Stepping Stones. Glass Stepping Stones is a game that sounds simple, but is far more complex the more you look into it. Players need to make it across a series of glass stones, but many of them are made of a material that looks just like glass, but will cause the players to fall to their deaths upon walking over. In a game like this, all you need is patience, agility, and a lot of luck. Obviously, Joe Swanson is the first death of the game. He is immediately at a disadvantage advantage due to the fact that this game is not wheelchair accessible, so sadly the fact that he needs one will cost him his chance at winning. Dr. Hartman might be intelligent, but is he smart enough to tell different types of glass from one another? Okay, heart sounds good. 
probably not, and it's that which leads to his elimination. Diane Simmons is also a great mind, but she also has a giant ego. We imagine that she'd be one of the first to try and brave the stones, only to fall a few steps in. Both Brian and Ernie would fall for similar reasons. Being that they're animals, it's unlikely that they'd be as well coordinated as the other players, meaning that they'd probably trip up sooner rather than later. But real quick, before we get to our last entry, if you're enjoying this video, do us a huge favor and hit that subscribe button and notification bell. We ask because we'd really appreciate the help getting to our next milestone, and we have lots more videos we'd love to share with you. Thanks so much. To remain as we jump into the big finale, The Squid Game. While this is named after a classic children's game, the way we'll be looking at this will be more akin to how it's presented in the Netflix series. It's a bloody and brutal battle to the end between two players, and in the end, only one will be left standing. The Squid Game will be fought between our last two players, Stewie and Bertram. Both of these characters are very much alike, so we have a pretty fair match when you really look at it. Stewie and Bertram are both highly intelligent, skilled fighters, and even have prior experience dealing with each other. While that is of great benefit, for one player that will sadly be a major hindrance. The character who will be hurt more by that fact is Bertram. You see, while they have indeed fought on numerous occasions, Bertram has pretty much always lost these conflicts. A later appearance even featured Stewie killing Bertram for good, so it seems to be pretty clear who would win here. Even if you get past these facts, Stewie has dealt with way worse things than Bertram. He's been on tons and tons of crazy adventures, so Bertram would be a walk in the park by comparison. Sorry Bertram, but it looks like there's only room in Quahog for one evil baby. The winner of this squid game is Stewie Griffin, thanks for his prior experience in dealing with his opponent and the sheer amount of more intense conflicts that he's dealt with. But let us know in the comment section if you agree with our winner. And tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge more of our videos, but most importantly, stay wicked.